5 o'clock, July 19th. Uh, welcome guests. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, we have Carol Simmons, Jennifer Adams, Zoe Van Eaton Meister. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my old man's brain. Uh, I would like to entertain a motion to adopt last meeting's minutes. So moved. Mark wasn't there. Oh, okay. Now I'll second. Uh, <coughs> any corrections? Discussion? I, I have a couple of things. Uh, one, two, this is the third page, mm, second paragraph. Uh, we're talking about the draft PV, I believe. Um, second sentence, as Mr. Zoff explained, if the development occurs adjacent to the village, then water sewer would be possible, water sewer would possibly be extended. He added that the option, oh, this is the one I wanted. He added that the option of private streets being permitted is inherited in the code. I, for the life of me, don't recall him saying that. Well, where did he go? He, he was here. I know. He's not here. But yeah, he said something about it. It was already in. It's been, it was transferred from the code as it was previously written. No? I, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to. I mean, I, I'd have to read. I'd have to be pointed to where that is. So maybe I'll have to ask him. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know said it or he didn't, whether or not it's accurate. Mm -hmm. It is okay, accurate. This, the, the, other, yeah. the other thing was that is the last. Paragraph before new business, where is it? Uh, oh, yeah, trustees assess the status of the process of proposed landscape around the fire station. Mr. Mutrick stated, or stated, asked, oh, I'm not sure why we do stated, asked, me neither, about the wet spot in the detention basin area. I don't recall asking about the wet spot. I recall asking how the, the, the flower planting, etc., was going. Uh, I don't concern myself with the wet spot one way or the other. Well, I replied saying that's. I, I rambled about the wet spot. Okay, so can no. you add that he rambled? Yeah. Sure. Okay. With the addition of ramble, that was so, the only. Do you didn't ask if you said it was Mr. Hollister that rambled? <laughs> I would rather not use that word. In the <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I and we'll talk more about that later. All right, let's. Uh, I had two. Two changes in the cemetery report. Mr. Gokenauer spoke with a homeowner about their mailbox rather than spoke with the homeowner's mailbox. We had a long conversation. Probably was a short conversation. Oh, it helped. Then back to zoning inspector's report. Uh, reporting on the EZA public hearing, last sentence. The board decided two things which are no commercial events will be permitted in a large barn, not just no events. Right, thank you. Which large barn is that? It's an agrarian. It was a zoning variance hearing on Agribusiness at the uh, library. Uh, well, I entertain. Shall we call the roll? Mr. Meacher? Here. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Thank you. And we're not going to let Mark vote because he wasn't here? He. No. Wasn't here. Wasn't here. Can't, can't vouch. Motion to approve payment of bills in the amount of, I will entertain a motion to entertain to <coughs> approve payment of bills in the amount of $73,568.24, including from the general fund $6,478.96. From fire, twenty thousand seven hundred nineteen dollars and 
33 cents. Cemetery fund, $559.30. EMS billing, $12,363.09. Road and bridge, $5,000. $294.87. From the capital project, $28,152.69. Do I hear a motion to approve? All right. Move for that. I'll move for that. Okay, I'm second. Moved and seconded to approve payment of bills. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? No, no. We'll call the roll. Mr. Crockett? Yeah. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole list of correspondence received, but there are some that uh, we should flag and lead into old or new business or other reports. Uh, we received an email about the zoning update status. We'll put that in old business. Uh, message about the American Rescue Plan Act uh, application. Uh, is that old business? Or? No. We've got FO here. Fiscal officer, just because of the fiscal officer financial report. Things. Okay. Uh, there's actually about five of these pieces of correspondence that deal with the same thing, but any one of those will do. Uh, there's purchase agreement for a columbarium. Can put that under cemetery. Uh, an email about fallen trees on Grinnell Drive. And that wasn't all of it on the road report. Uh, and notice from Cedarville Township inviting us to a, a scheduled meeting about this solar <coughs> installation <coughs> on July 26th. Put that under old business. Any agenda items that others want to add? Or make a general comment on that was their intention. It's a, it's a new um, line right, on understand. the agenda. Well, you should make comment when they come up. Fire department report. <coughs> I think you technically they're supposed to make a comment at this time, not as they come up. I mean, that's why it's there. Yeah, get it out of the way. Uh, well, I would entertain additional comments during the business world and fine but in the future yes so forth no one certainly wanted to speak am i right fire department report okay <laughs> since the last meeting we've had well, 34 ems incidents 11 fire incidents three of the ems incidents were in bath township i believe and two were in uh, two of the fire were in bath township <coughs> Um, since we last spoke, we've had crews out at the uh, Dayton Air Show providing coverage with the bike team, as we've done for a long time. And the incidents? Yeah. No. Yeah. They were expecting like 60,000 people. Yeah. I don't know if we got to. <laughs> but right. not on Saturday. That's for yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was out there Saturday uh, for a little bit, and there was not a whole lot of activity. Yeah. Um, and then from what I heard from Sunday's crew, same thing. So. Yeah. And seen a mud volleyball then, uh, uh, then this past Saturday we had crews out uh, for the, I think the 15th year at uh, the mud, vol date mud volleyball for the Epilepsy Foundation where we provide uh, medical standby services. And, uh, that was perfect weather for that. That was very good weather, <laughs> um, but they weren't very busy. I think they saw eight patients, which is very unusual for mud volleyball. Hmm. Uh, we're usually in the 20 to 30 patient range. Wow. Um, so, what types of Incidents. Uh, typically, it's uh, oddly mud in the eyes. <laughs> Is that uh, right? <laughs> and then, uh, as the day progresses and more and more beer is consumed, uh, you start seeing more uh, injuries, ankle injuries, mm -hmm. um, 
I mean, I'd kill myself if I was playing volleyball in mud this deep. And if you had beer on top of it. <laughs> but, uh, so I don't know if the crowd was down or what, I haven't got the full report yeah. from Nick. Um, two years ago, the last time they had it, I think we saw 36 patients. Now, it was also 92 degrees, mm -hmm. and, you know, people hydrate by drinking beer, which is, I can tell you as a public service, a very bad idea <laughs> from a medical standpoint, so don't do that. Uh, but everyone had a good time, and those are all volunteer events that our guys do, so thank you. We have um, entered into a contract with a company called Target Solutions, which is an online provider of continuing education training for fire departments and emergency medical services. Uh, one of the downsides of moving to the staff three schedule shifted system is we don't really have a place to do a whole department training anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're missing out on some things. And Target Solutions gives us the ability to not only use canned presentations, particularly on the emergency medical services side, um, but to add our own presentations into their cloud-based uh, system so that we could roll out a training on a new piece of equipment or something like uh, harassment or you know something like that, blood more pathogens, put it up there, tell the guys you've got three weeks to watch it and take the quiz, and, and it works out really nicely. Uh, they came highly recommended from a lot of other agencies who use them. so. Uh, so it's well, all done virtual? Yeah. No more Randy and Randy yet? Well, we'll still be doing that as well. This is a compliment to that. Um, one of the things that we're encountering is over the three year certification period, ENTs, paramedics, and firefighters have to maintain a certain amount of continuing education. Mm -hmm. um, part of it had to do with the pandemic, but it used to be a lot easier for them to get. Um, hospitals used to do it for free. Miami Valley was a huge one. Every Saturday you go down there and get cookies and sit through a presentation. That's dropped off. Really, um, Premier is doing some more virtual now, um, and we'll continue to have, you know, Premier and Kettering come in and do trainings here for us. So, and then each, you know, Lieutenant Pellet, Lieutenant and Captain Ayers do training, fire training, particularly on their respective shifts. But this way, we can assure that everyone has the ability to to get. It. We can record trainings too. You know, if, uh, Lieutenant Pellet did one the other day on. Uh, soft tissue trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can record that in the future and then the guys can watch it on other shifts. And mm -hmm. So everyone gets the benefit from the different, different trainings. Um, we're also going to start a system where Dan and I will assign a monthly fire topic that all three shifts will have to address. So mm -hmm. they're all getting uniform training mm -hmm. uh, on, on those topics. So, um, Who makes the syllabus for that or, or the... On the fire thing, that would just be Dan. Oh, okay. uh, fire CEs are a lot easier because they just have to be approved by a fire chief. Mm -hmm. so, it's, so as I present them, I mean, at least give them, I know that those three guys mm -hmm. are training how they want them. Mm -hmm. And typically we give them a, a training outline of just, I guess, talking points isn't the right term, but mm -hmm. training points to hit. Mm -hmm. um, Nate's, uh, Captain Harris is now a fire instructor. He became a state certified fire instructor. So that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, Lieutenant Went is a state certified assistant fire instructor, and then Lieutenant Pallady is starting his EMS instructor course. Mm -hmm. uh, so that'd be nice additional teaching resources. I'm a fire instructor, and Assistant Chief Powell is both a fire and a two instructor. So. so that gives us the ability to grant these CEs and mm -hmm. uh, make sure that everyone's up to snuff. Who's our current staff of inspectors? Fire inspectors, myself, Assistant Chief Powell, Captain Ayers, and Lieutenant Wendt. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then Lieutenant Powell will go in later this year or early next year. Mm -hmm. uh, but we wanted to get the MS instructor course out of the way first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, good. I was afraid we were down to just a one or two uh, again. No, we've uh, been upping our, and so I don't have the numbers there, unfortunately, but we've been upping. I've got to figure out how to get that report out of the ESM. <laughs> Um, all I can see are my inspections, so I don't really know what's going on. But um, we've been upping our activity now that COVID restrictions are lifting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doing a lot of consults and a lot of inspections with our current building department. Mm -hmm. I don't know the new one will be, but uh, <laughs> yeah. we shall see. Yeah. <laughs> um, <coughs> that's the training world. Uh, I 
Chris, I believe you know this, but uh, the smaller Medic, Medic 81, uh, its high pressure oil pump has gone belly, uh, unfortunately. And uh, it could just be seals leaking, or it could be the whole pump that's bad. Uh, they, they won't know, they, the maintenance people won't know until they open it up and find out, basically. It's like exploratory surgery. So what can we do without that pump? Well, I can't run without that pump. Um, that won't start. Which vehicle again? <coughs> 81, this is the smaller, the, the older of the two units. So, uh, <coughs> just waiting to hear when uh, the maintenance guy wants it, and then we'll get it up there, and uh, we'll hope for leaking O-rings versus <laughs> the whole back pump. I seem to remember, I have to look back in Firehouse, our own software, but I seem to remember that we had this problem on one of our trucks in the past, but I don't. I can't remember which one, so I'll have to look back and make the sense. And I might, I mean, I'm crazy too. So, there's so many things that have gone wrong with our fleet over the years. Um, but once this is fixed, it should be fine. So, uh, they were, uh, Brian Clem is the guy who's going to do the work for us, who is a green, is he a green township mm -hmm. trust, mm -hmm. um, Farmer, member of Houston Fire and EMS, and also a diesel mechanic who runs a diesel mechanic shop on the side. When he's got a free time, apparently. Um, he was going to talk to the trustees of Mad River and Green to see if they would be open to loaning us their backup medic that Houston has during the same period of time. I told them it was appreciated but not necessary, but he felt that it was something he wanted to do, or at least explore. And I said, well, if you do it, I mean, we'll be happy to take care of it. Backup is in second line? Yeah, it's, line? it's their sec second line. Second. Mm -hmm. his, his thought is that typically we go up there to help them in the second call anyway. Mm -hmm. and they've been helping us. Houston's been fantastic while well, this medic's been down helping us because we seem to have this curse that all our calls come at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so we've had Houston down here quite a bit. Very helpful, but then at night we've been going to Houston a lot, so mm -hmm. it plays out pretty well. So. so I'll keep you posted on what we hear on that one. Uh, I was last week at the uh, Ohio Fire Chiefs Association conference all week. Um, I can say for the first time we actually had a really good conference with really good educational program. Um, I attended a couple of courses taught by the State Employee Relations Board. On HR issues and a couple other issues and things that are pressing at the moment. So uh, that was very helpful and fortuitous. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but it was a good, uh, very good conference, and uh, and I was sworn in as president elect of the, of the Fire Chiefs Association yeah, yeah, yeah. for one year term yeah. until next year, obviously, yeah. which would be one year. So. Mm -hmm. That would be. And then I will <laughs> become president unless there's a coup or something happens. So, <laughs> so that's very exciting. Um, and last but not least, I have finally, I have received the official notice from the federal government to renew our SAM uh, registration. Um, yeah. I always wait till I get their official one. So, We've got um, a ton of them. We've got yeah, there's, to me. Oh, yeah. there's all these contractors who I, I learned after doing it the first two times through these guys that have names like Federal Grant Administration or something like that that charge you 100, 200 bucks to renew it, and then the first time I did it myself through SAM.gov, it took about six minutes, and it's free. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I remember that. So I learned that. So that we are, we do have a 180 day extension due to COVID if we want it, but mm -hmm. I'll do it tomorrow morning because it's, it's pretty much a no brainer. So and then we'll be good for another year. The downside through SAM.gov is I can only do it for one year at a time, mm -hmm. whereas these private guys will do it for up to three years at a time for six hundred dollars. But I figured. You get that six minutes to spare. It's a better use of taxpayer dollars <laughs> to not drop six hundred simoleons on a yeah good thinking on a six minute project. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's amazing to me. We run to the same thing with our, our radio license through the FCC that you'll start getting. They're good for ten years, and we start getting these notices from United States Radio Communications Council. They're very official looking, and you know, they want to charge you three hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Danny did it last time. Took them 22 minutes to get the thing done, and <laughs> it's all online. Yeah, so piece of cake. So, so that's it.
That's right up there. Your new car warranty is about to expire. And <laughs> it's probably the same people. <laughs> yeah, probably is. <clears throat> Any questions of the chief? Yeah. Then we have the the non-cemetery and non-road report pending, but we have a couple items in there. Since Dan is not here, I'm calling that a non. Oh, okay. Uh, interestingly, we had already gotten an email of trees about to fall on uh, Grinnell, and I had gone out to look to see what had happened, and another one had fallen, and Dan was just finishing on the mailbox that was referred to in the minutes, and he rushed over to Cornell Circle and um, took out that, but there's still a couple of leaning trees that he hasn't done yet. Lights and sirens, I must have been. Was, I'm, I'm sorry, did you speak up? Yeah, uh, he had lights and sirens going. <laughs> really? Oh, he had lights. <laughs> <laughs> he can hang his head out the window and make siren noises. Mm -hmm. uh, but I skipped over cemetery. Um, you want to say anything about the columbarium? Uh, the check was in the mail and they received it and it's confirmed and the material has been ordered. Uh, and we're still on schedule for a first of the year-ish delivery, uh, which is good to know. And the new storage shed is spent. Uh, so when the time comes, it goes, because that delivery is only six to eight weeks out, I think, is what they said. Uh, so we won't be ordering that for a while. Uh, now it's important to get a road superintendent, or administrator, excuse me, to use his contacts who want the old storage shed to uh, kindly come and get it. Uh, so we can get in the process of uh, putting a the foundation down for the new columbarium storage shed. Uh, we'd like to have that down before it gets too cold and give it a chance to cure. Uh, I'd like to use, if you don't mind, I'd like to use uh, uh, um, Phil, I'm going to just go away, Phil, Phil Moore? That doesn't sound more. That doesn't sound more. Yeah. Okay. Um, construction for the Police Network, because they are certainly so if it's under ten thousand, we don't need to bid it. Under under twenty five. Um, the cement they, pad, right? Yeah, and they do excellent work, and I would certainly hope this pad will be there for many years. And as long as they're doing a cement pad, they, they, could they do a sidewalk section in front of the oh. here? Uh, as long as the the jet clears the back, they can. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we got dismissed on uh, the little puddle right in front of our front door, and I, and I think that's going to end, end up being a problem. Okay, well, th that's another subject. Yes, it is. So it's not a different topic. Mm -hmm. And that's all I have for cemetery. I've got a road thing. Um, yes. I'm, Looked at roads yesterday, and thanks to Mother Nature, they look awful. Uh, they're all overgrown in both grass and uh, yeah, trees and bushes and anything else that grows on the side that wants to come and visit the roadway itself. And he's not here, but I could have sworn that the last meeting we had, he said he was going out and, and, and committing that whole week ahead to trimming roads and such. And I think that nothing, nothing has it been has done. Yeah, you can do stuff in, in between rains and showers. Well, he'll be, he'll be back at it tomorrow, right? Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we have like four days of no rain. I'm talking. Yeah, there'll be a lot done. But <coughs> I just was surprised that, that nothing had been done. That's all. That's all I have.
fiscal officer's report. We have a couple resolutions. We'll start with resolution 2021-24, transfer of funds. Oh, whereas it is the intent of my town of trustees to distribute funds appropriately and fiscally responsibly, and whereas it is the responsibility of the township to pay a portion of expenses as a result of the construction of the firehouse, now therefore it be a result that the Miami Town of Trustees authorize the fiscal office to transfer $106,340.75 from the general fund to capital fund 4901. And that is the exact amount of money that remains on the document in the other room of, of the contractors, what, you know, what we we're going to be responsible for, and we knew we were, and anyway, I just went ahead and I started, we're starting to pay those back, pay those now, so I transferred the total amount. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, great. Yeah, end of story. Okay, I will um, uh, move for the uh, passage of resolution twenty one twenty four. Would like to second. Yeah, it's been moved and seconded. <coughs> we transfer the funds. Any other discussion of it? No. Are we call the roll? Mr. Crockett? <coughs> yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Thank you. And, more excitement, um, resolution 2021-25, amendment of permanent appropriations. Uh, whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township, now therefore the trustees authorize amending of the following appropriations. In the general fund, I increased um, utilities by $400. Special levy fire increased training services by 3,000 and natural gas by 2,000. And EMS billing uh, also increased training services by 3,000 there. And, uh, and EMS billing uh, contractor services increased by $1,612. In the capital fund, um, this is where the money was transferred, but then you have to Appropriated. Uh, the capital fund 4901, I increased it by $152,309.84. And that, just to be clear to everyone, is the money not from our funds, it's all our funds, but from the general fund, but this is the final distribution of our loan from USDA. So this will close out our short-term relationship with USDA, our long-term relationship is still good for the next 28 and a half years, uh, give or take, uh, so. Yeah, thank you for that clarification. Yes. In honor of that, we thought we'd get a framed photo of Ashley. <laughs> Just so he's always watching us. <laughs> he's around. Um, yes. I'll move for adoption of 21, 2021-25. <coughs> Second. Thank you. Moved and seconded. Discussion. <coughs> Please call the roll. Mr. Crockett. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Mutcher. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, there is one more resolution on the agenda, but. Um, it's slightly premature at this point. As I was going through it again, I realized there's, I need to do a little more tweaking. So if we could just move that on to the next meeting, table it to the next meeting, that would be good. Is that all right? Is that official enough of a statement? Or? It's okay with me. Te uh, technically, it's not tabled until it's moved. Okay, well then, so yeah, just, well, whatever just the te technicality is. <coughs> I'll move that we table. Okay. You all right there, Mr. Kovic? Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, God. <laughs> Actually, we don't even need a, just don't call it a table. Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah, okay. so, yeah, bada bing, I'm done. Okay. Uh, I wanted to explain what this is about as long as we have it in front of us. Yes, please. Sure. If you recall, a few meetings ago, we were quite short in the uh, EMS uh, line item fund and transferred something around $40,000, give or take, 39,000 to, yeah. 39, to, uh, to hold it over a little bit. And subsequent to that, I went through 
um, went through all our appropriation status for a fire and, and the EMS fund. And since we are uh, a little over halfway through the year, and I, I realize it isn't a perfect uh, scenario, but um, uh, any, of those, any of those funds that were being underutilized, and that would be what funds we have in front of us, underutilized to, to, an, uh, to an extent where there was enough to make it worthwhile uh, making a transfer into, all of these transfers are into, um, which one, oh, to, to uh, salaries, to salary line items, fire salaries, 100% 100, 100 of these transfers are, if you notice. And so we'll move this excess, quote, money into salaries to, so we keep on track of what we have to spend, 100% of what we have to spend in the fire fund before we start moving more money, if necessary, from the general fund. We can't, even if we wanted to, which we don't worry about to, because we're going to end up using it, we can't bring that 39000 back into the general fund because of lots of laws. Uh, so we'll, huh? Yes, yeah, true. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so we'll leave that, move this money around. And there's, right now, there's a, a, a uh, of course we use money, but there's a fair amount, there's an awful lot of money in this account. This, uh, this Awful. It's an awful amount. <laughs> it's terrible. Uh, it is. It's an awful lot. It, uh, right, this is a public <laughs> meeting that's being recorded. I understand that. Sorry. Having this kind of fun Straight up. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what and, and that's what it is. One of these lines, because it's been a while since I went through these and and asked uh, our fiscal officer to move them, uh, one of the lines has subsequently been needed to be used to the point where it's really not a good idea to. I don't think there's enough money in it right now. Uh, well, yeah, there would be, but to to move the amount. Uh, that, that I had requested. Yeah, so we're going, to, we're going to change that and then come back uh, next meeting and, and hopefully move these funds. Um, but as I say, this is for the rest of the year. This is not something that's, that's critical for paying anyone. It's just to make sure we're you know, as, close, as close as we can to being on track as to how much we have and how much is going on. Same old stuff. So that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Um, so now we will now talk we about that same item at our next meeting. Good True. Confirm. That's all I have. So we have standing committee reports. We're not just standing committee. We have reports from different organizations that we are on in. Well, I'm on the first, and that's quickly because we did not meet in July. Uh, I'm on the second. We met in, uh, we met in July, or, yeah, we met in July at regional, county regional planning, and mainly what we did was we officially hired um, Deandra Navatorelli, I get that name right, eventually. Uh, as the new executive director. She was interim director for a month, and then the executive committee decided to make her permanent director and authorized her to uh, recruit an assistant director, which she is doing at the present. Uh, we actually will meet tomorrow and get a report as to where she is on, on that recruitment. Um, hopefully it'll be good news. She did have one interested candidate uh, who was coming, or who was going to take, not coming here, I, I was going to do a Zoom interview last Tuesday and for some reason uh, changed his mind like the morning of the interview. And I'm not sure what that says, but he's withdrawn his name from contention. So that takes care of that. Uh, what's that up for me? Uh, the mill has not had a room yet. Could, could I ask a question about Certainly. regional planning or Green County regional planning? Mm -hmm. uh, will you be looking at our proposed change to the PUD? Uh, that has been done. Okay. It's yeah, been done and, and responded to. Richard said something about it. It might be discussed again. 
I, if, if it is, I don't know that they have resubmitted it for, for some additional change. Uh, I do know that they, they have made, uh, uh, made comments about it and, and got back with Richard about it. So, we shall see. Um, again, lastly, the mill roof is still waiting to be put on. Um, that's all I can say about that. Is it? Is it uh, scheduled at every? Is it full every weekend? Fortunately, I'm out of the middle of the the process of the of the work on the roof and the scheduling of reservations. Now, the roofer and the mill manager, Susie. Uh, are, in theory, and I, I've talked to both of them, conf confirming with each other what their schedules are. I've also got a, a roof painter who's waiting to be authorized to paint the final coat on the shed, a little add-on part, so that's on there too. So. I only ask that because I hear of other places just being booked through the whole season, mm -hmm. and I drive by, and sometimes on the weekend I see no cars. Hmm. That doesn't mean there isn't somebody staying yeah. over and just is out of the time. But yeah. I, I can say only uh, that we get we get um, digital we get email copies of phone messages that, that are down there. I mean, and I, I'm I have no reason to believe she doesn't. She's not picking them up. But there is a substantial upturn in calls saying. Do you have availability for this and that day? Uh, I have gone to online scheduling and put in my name for July, August, such and such. I'd like to confirm that. You know, these these are messages in, in quantities I haven't seen in a while. Was that email copy that was on our uh, township email? That email, digital copy of voicemail, was that? It didn't say what it was about. I was guessing it was for that one. Yes. One that's a, there, there's actually two digital copies that come through. One of them, for whatever reason, is for Margaret's phone. Not ours. We don't get copies of ours. But we get a copy of hers. And the mill. And hers is my connect, my something connection. And the one for the mill is the, is the Vonage yeah, that's what voicemail I saw. copy. So, that's just a, you know, so that I'm sure that's got something to do with it because uh, I, I made it clear all along, I, you know, I really don't want the roof replaced at some time when there's people just below it <laughs> sleeping or enjoying themselves or whatever, and <laughs> bam, 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 or whatever. So, um, not to mention going up and down a ladder and saying, oh, look at that window, aren't, aren't they having fun? Um, so that's, Certainly must have something to do with it, but at some point <laughs> there's got to be a break so they can get this metal on there because I don't want to go through another winter, winter without it. Even though it's got this very special, expensive underlayment on there that's meant to protect, protect for a long time. So anyway, that's where we are with that. Sorry to be long-winded. Well, I'm the one that kept asking questions. Uh, now I've turned my, where's my agenda? Uh, Clifton Union Cemetery has not had a meeting since our last month. The Yellow Springs Community Development Corporation is uh, sort of stepping back, reviewing our first year, and Setting priorities, shall we say. And I'm assuming you don't have any report. Or would you actually, do you have anything you want to say? No. Has the YSTC been spending any of their new commission funds for anything that you know? Uh, Actually, uh, it had not. As of, it has not. Mm -hmm. And in fact, at the last meeting, the finance report didn't reflect. It had not received it yet. Mm -hmm. 
thought I had seen, Carol, you were there, I think, that there was a $2,500 expenditure for something. Oh, they have other funds to spend. Oh, okay. Yes, they have actually spent more on legal fees than they had, than we had uh, originally budgeted. Uh, any project updates or uh, anything going on? Uh, not, I know it's not that are public. That's why I said we've stepped back and are setting priorities for the next year. So that, that is public. So everything's private at this point? Mm. Interesting. There is a pending project that is not public. There one. I work on one project. Oh, that doesn't mean you can say I've got there's five different projects that are there's one. one. There's one. Okay. Now I know. You're working on one project? Hey, it's hard for me to keep my mouth shut, as you know. <laughs> so well, just, doing a good job. Just keep Don. at it for another second or two. <laughs> That's all the questions I have. Yeah. Uh, we do have Old business, is there anything that we were calling new business? I have one item of new business, as it were. If you haven't already walked out the front door and stood on the sidewalk and, and looked at the building, there's a nice new shiny from sign. The, from the Xenia Avenue side? You know, uh, on the side of the building that's been back ordered for, oh, six, eight, 12 months, something like that, but it's actually up there now. And most of the letters are lit. Working on it. Yep, mm -hmm. still working on it. There's still a letter or two. Today. So some of the lights aren't functioning. New. The M or the something else. The W. Is for the, we started out that the S and the uh, S and the T on station weren't lit, and they got that lit. And the uh, uh, M and the I on Miami Township were not lit, and they got that lit. And now somewhere along the line, the W on Township is not working. So it's tip, not twip. It is. <laughs> but it's a nice looking sign. And um, I thought it was so nice looking that Board of Trustees needed one just like it. So against my better judgment, I've asked Jason to uh, look into getting uh, letters just like those, uh -huh. smaller, mm -hmm. because we don't have the same space, and, and not, not be lit and put them just to the right of our main door and would say um, Miami Township Administrative Offices. So that might be a hint if somebody came by that this that's, was the proper entrance. That's where they, that's where they are. Just a small we like, those, we like those hints. Letters would be about four inches high, I believe. But it might work out to be good. Jason's going to ask the sign people to make measurements and move the stuff. They've had a hard time with that sign. Make it look good. Yes, they have. But they might say no. Hope springs eternal. Yes, they might. So, looking forward to moving along now. That's all I have in the new business. Uh, what was the old business one? Um, zoning update status. Oh yeah, the code. Um, that's old business we're moving on? Yeah, that's old business. All right. uh, yes, the moving on the old zoning business. code revision where we're, uh, we had two, two different sets of codes that nobody knew about, or some people didn't know about, existed, have now been uh, compiled into one, the, the most recent one with the current upgrades. So that will be hopefully in the next day or so, put on the website. The old one is still on the website. It will still be the old one, as you see, on the website, but all the changes will, be, will have been made to it and updates added to it. So the code that I submitted to the county is have included the updates? No. It just wasn't on the... No. No, so we need to add, we need to just move the new ones in. Someday. Yeah. Uh, we'll also have... Um, some additional changes after the zoning commission. I don't know if the PUD's in. Yeah, uh, has a public hearing 
by the PUD and then submits it to us for our public hearing and approval, modification, or denial. Uh, the last thing is, I haven't heard, unless you have, Colin, about the new deduct meter, again, which has taken forever and a day. I have not heard anything. I'll double check with Danny in case he's heard something. And, and, and Jason, too. Jason just talked about it today. What did he say about it? Coming? I know that. That's the <laughs> when it might be coming. <laughs> no. Okay. He was, he was probably saying a lot of things, right. well, but there was there was a comment about okay. it. Okay. It's it's on it's it's in the works. Okay. You probably know that. I I do know that it's in the works. I just wish yeah. it was on uh, yeah. on the job. Yeah. Right. Because I'm afraid of when we go to the village and say we have you know fifty thousand gallons of water that you need. Yeah, to. it's not getting any smaller. Right. Sure. <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's big. Yeah. So that's that. Uh, I don't have anything else. The, on the Kingwood solar industrial installation, mm -hmm. uh, Cedarville Township has invited us to, or invited us to send one representative uh, to their, their public meeting July 26th. Uh, so at 6 p.m., is that right, Jennifer, 6 p.m.? I would have to double check that. I'm pretty sure this. Uh, so it's, as I understand it, it's a, it's a formal meeting of Cedarville Township trustees, and they're inviting neighboring uh, townships to send representatives. It's a public meeting uh, on the topic of the Kingwood Solar you know, Project. Uh, and I plan to go to that. Good. Uh, and I expect at least one person from the group that I referred to before, the Greater Dayton Environmental Partners, mm -hmm. uh, sort of ad hoc committee of people who are going to give their professional expertise for free. Mm -hmm. uh, and after that, I think that things will accelerate in terms of documents that we want to review as, as our formal uh, statements about it. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, do you know if there's been any movement in Columbus by the signing board on this project? Um, so I think the last time I was here I mentioned that they found the application complete. Mm -hmm. um, Kingwood has officially filed the application, you know, it's, it's down, it has an official file date. I saw that you guys submitted some more paperwork, I believe, for intervention. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I haven't seen anything yet. There's, we're supposed to see, um, their administrative law judge is supposed to set the hearing schedule, mm -hmm. um, and I have not seen that yet. That's what I was interested in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Lee Sloan, I think, is, mm -hmm. has been very quick to uh, send us a notice when mm -hmm. we see something. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, any other old business? I have one little, well, it's not that little. Or any one other business of any kind? Kind of on old business. Um, we will be expecting shortly, somewhere in the neighborhood of $68,000 as our official contribution for the CARES Act funding distribution number one. Number one. We'll get another one this time next year also. Um, so we're still waiting for our rural view of the possibilities. I've read over that, mm -hmm. um, and I, my instinct is to sort of open up for suggestions from our constituents. Of you know, we might end up saying no, we don't. We're going to stick with. Uh, you know, 
reimbursing ourselves for COVID expenses that have to do with fire and rescue. Uh, but I'd like to look at the wider universe. And, and we've got, and what's the, the timeline? Is we have to commit by October? I think that's the case. First report is due in October. Uh, and then that doesn't have to be spent till the end of 22. Mm -hmm. That's the first set. The right. second one goes to 24. But we do have a relatively limited choice of, of uses. Uh, we can do it in economic development, which is what we did use our first CARE Act funding. Uh, not all of it, but uh, a good portion of it we did use for that. Um, now, I'm certainly no expert, but I'm not sure. I mean, based on the economy, if one, when, when you go to the mall, I don't know the mall, but Seems, so things seem to be moving along in, in recovery terms. Um, I, I'm, I would have to be convinced, I think, fairly firmly as to the necessity to commit funds to, to um, reimburse or to, to grant money to businesses uh, or perhaps even individuals at this point. I mean, there's such a, a need for, for uh, workers out there. Um, and say, oh, well, you're sitting at home and don't have a job, but you want us to write you a check. Um, and of course, there are certain circumstances that would warrant that. But again, I'm not sure that's the number one priority. Uh, and number two is one we can't be involved with because, I mean, we, no, not really. It's, 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 it's definite infrastructure. It's, it's water, it's sewer, it's roads uh, for construction. and. I mean, real roads, interstates, and the like, for access to hospitals and firehouses. Oh. <laughs> and broadband, mm -hmm. which is where I think we could potentially um, consider using a portion mm -hmm. of this money uh, with, in conjunction with the village. Uh, uh, hearing what their plan is, but I don't know what their plan is. And, you know, I would, I sort of would like to see some availability to residents uh, of, of outside of the, the village in, in Miami Township who don't have access to this 100 up, 25 down minimum that they would have to have, which in my opinion just about means outside of where Spectrum has service. If you're inside of where Spectrum has service, it's kind of like, you know, do you want to get vaccinated or do you want to risk the COVID? Do you want to have do you want to sign up for the unfortunately seventy dollar a month spectrum mm -hmm. and have the hundred up, twenty five down, and be able to do all the things that everybody wants to do? We don't have any choice. Us people out the township. Or do you want to wait for the village and the township to spend tax money and and put a fiber outside of your house and give you that service for free? Well, I, I haven't waited. Uh, well, I, I, I don't, uh, there are a couple specific things yeah, you said there that I, I would argue the accuracy of, but which actually just illustrates okay, my which, interest. Which ones are those? The, the, what's not accurate? The, the plans around uh, broadband are not to pay for it all with tax money. But, uh, okay, what other kind of money is there? <clears throat> For the village to complete a broadband, they would be selling bonds and paying back by collecting fees. Oh, no, no. Uh, well, I, yeah, I, I certainly understand that. And I'm sorry if I may have uh, sounded, I'm talking about the, the immediate. But, so this conversation the two of us are having right now is what I think we ought to have in a room that was a publicly announced meeting that we're, uh, we're, air, we're, we're interested in ideas. Mm -hmm. We'll end up making the decisions. Mm -hmm. But rather than uh, us looking at our budget and trying to figure out how can we make the most of this uh, over the next four years or three years uh, without input, I, I think we should. Similarly, I, it, it may fit to coordinate with the village and have a, kind of a town township village forum. Uh, sooner than later, and then we can step back and have the same conversation again. 
Okay, I see it kind of 180 from that. And, and I made this point when the village initially approached us for CARES Act money a year ago or, or more. I asked more than once to, to get an explanation of how they plan on using it, and I, I never did receive that. I, I really don't want to have a public meeting about participation without knowing what I'm participating in. And, and that leads to, to, to I, I need you to agree that we want to participate in it, and Mark to agree that we want to participate in it, and without the knowledge of what they're doing, I can't say, yeah, let's do that. Let's invite everybody in and talk about it. I, I, you know, without knowing what we're talking about, I, I would feel very... Uh, that is, you're, let me see if I'm hearing you, you don't want to just announce a meeting without some structure to it, and, uh, you know, what's, what's the point of it? Is it just hot air, or... I don't want to announce a meeting if I don't want to participate in it. Why, why have people here for something that I don't want to do? And I won't know whether I want to do it until somebody tells me what it's about and how this money is going to be spent. But I feel like it's, it's yeah, sort of a circular. You're 100 percent right. It uh, is a circular. That is, I mean, we could we could uh, put out a public message that we agree. we are. We, Actually, we haven't said in this meeting, I don't think. We have formally applied for it. And that is you uh, did that work a week ago. Um, applied for the funds, is that what we're talking about? Right. Yeah. Um, so we, and granted, I mean, they're coming. Yeah, so the money's coming. Uh, so we put out and we say it's allowed to be for this, this, and this. Um, it is not in our current. We, we did not, our current budget does not reflect the availability of this money. So we are going to appropriate money um, and we are inviting, uh, we, we would like to know what the village is doing, which is separate from them having a public meeting, but uh, I would like to know what the village is doing, um, or thinking of, and it would make sense to uh, Solicit ideas, you know, maybe three people will come, maybe no one will come. I know this is unusual, but it's also unusual money, and it's come from a you know, year and a half of craziness. And, and I think it merits a, a different approach. Can I just ask a quick question? Did you say that the money cannot be spent on like any kind of infrastructure? Right, it, like water, it, it sewer. It can be. It can be. That is one of the, the uses, the approved uses. Except huh. we don't have a water system to spend it on ourselves. Right. Okay. Or we, we, have a, we have a narrower okay. set of yeah. choices than the village. Okay, so maybe that's and what you meant. You can't, we can't spend the money on that stuff. Right. Yeah, but township. included in the infrastructure is broadband. That's water, sewer, broadband. Oh, okay. That's how, that's how we got to broadband. Mm -hmm. Okay. We can't do water, sewer, or roads. Right. So at our next meeting, I will write down a proposal. I will have a written proposal, or I will have dropped it and backed off. <laughs> OK. Is it um, appropriate to ask the ballpark of what the money amount is that you applied for? 68000 that. Yeah. Was specified mm -hmm. on a state website. It just listed all the townships. Uh, um, Sixty-eight thousand mm -hmm. this year. Actually, one hundred thirty over two years. Mm -hmm. The total is one hundred thirty. Okay. That, that one hundred thirty is guaranteed. We don't have to apply for that again. Mm -hmm. We applied for the one thirty, and they're going to distribute it over two years. I'm yeah. sorry. Is that from the counties? No, or it's from, from the state. Uh, no, it's from the federal government. Okay, down through the state. Right. Yeah. Like, I know. Initially, there was that question about whether townships could yes qualify. Right. And the federal government passed a rule that authorized the state to determine whether townships were eligible or should be eligible. The state of Ohio did that 
that's why we're getting this money after everybody else has got it, got theirs. Okay. So, uh, Fire Chiefs Association passed the resolution in support of I heard it. <laughs> I heard it. Thank you very much. Or you can you can thank them for. Or you can a lot of townships uh, provide fire in EMS so and actually expanded funds on like some pretend things you see that people pay for. Yeah. Well, uh, to be continued. Okay. But we're not going anywhere. <laughs> well, actually, I think we. Uh, I would entertain. Well, I'm not going away for two years anyway, so I, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do you want to say anything? No. Glad to see you. Okay. I'll second. Yes. No, he didn't take, I'm sorry. He didn't take a motion. I will move to adjourn. We have to be formal now. If anybody didn't get this over the last couple of meetings, you can't just say, okay, I was, I was convinced that Robert's Rules of Order allowed the chair to, to adjourn without a motion, but I've been corrected. So it's been moved. You'd like to second? I'm saying that. Right? Moved and seconded uh, that we adjourn. No, let's stay. Please call the roll. <laughs> it's a bottleneck. <laughs> Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yeah. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. All right. So I wonder if technically all those Six meetings two. never were adjourned. Well, technically they were not. <laughs> and they're continuing in another dimension. Oh, God, I think I've got to do that episode. So we need to.